Hello everyone. Today, today is day seven. We are going to discuss about live demo on the climate data analysis tool or community data analysis tools. Yesterday we have uh, seen about well, what is the use of overall view of uh, CDAT. Also, we have seen the live demo for the NumPy. Today, I'm going to start with the installation of uh, CDAT. Parallelly, I'll, I'll go with the, uh, the today's class. So first of all, we can install Miniconda. I already mentioned that we don't need to install Anaconda. We can just go with the Miniconda. If you just search the Miniconda, then we'll end up with this, this website. There, uh, Windows also there. Mac is there, Linux is there. So I'm choosing Linux. I'm going with the Python 2.7. Since I'm using it past 10 years, I couldn't immediately move to Python 3. But one day, eventually, I need to go move it. So, so I'm just downloading this Miniconda. It just downloaded. Then, what we have to do? We have to just yes, search Miniconda. It is asking to press enter to continue. Review the license agreement that is open source license. You can see that the entire license. You can scroll down. That's a shell which in, then I'm just skipping this license, just Q, then I'm accepting this. That's open source license. Then it is asking. Now it is saying that Miniconda will now be installed into the location by default home location. Instead of home, this folder will be created. I'm just press confirm, enter. Now it will come up with the by default with the Python 2.7 and along with that many packages. So it is asking like, do you want to initialize mini, mini Conda by running Conda in it? Yes. So now Conda has been installed. I'm just doing this Conda config. So it will be by default. Yeah, now the Conda has been enabled. We can see that Conda ENV list. Right now it's empty list, just it is having only base. Within this, we are going to download CDAT. This is a CDAT website. If you go there, you can go to the installing. That will redact to GitHub. So here, what I'm going to do. From Linux, I'm going to choose this latest version 8.1 Linux Python 2 and one more version called Python Mesalib, where it's suppose if you are installing it 
this called uh, or see that inside your HPC where there is no X. X means GUI. So you can't access the X. Then using your RAM memory itself, uh, it, it will plot plotting. It, it will be useful for the plotting. Without the X, it will plot it. So I'm just going with this. Copy link. I'm downloading it using wget and this also downloaded now i'm going to just create conda env create hyphen n environment name this is the name which i am giving and this is the file option which i downloaded yaml file so now it will take some time and it will ask question either shall I install or not. And once we press yes, it will download some nearly two GB amount of data and then it will download and then it will install. Oh conda memory and the conda process and out of memory uh, this is my brother's remote system it doesn't it has only one gb at least I, it requires at least two gb so tomorrow i'll try again installation in mihir or in some other server so today i'm unable to show the demo for the live installation Sorry for that. So tomorrow I'll try to log in to me here and then now also I can try, but the thing is there is no internet in me here. So if you want to delete it, you can just you can see that that mini con has been created. So it's just 300 MB. The mini one is 300 MB, but if you install Anaconda, it will download uh, GB soft it, GB soft package, it will download and install. And so of that, we are installing mini and then within that, uh, we are installing only see that it will occupy two GB, but that would be sufficient for our, uh, all our analysis. I'm unable to log into NCMWF network. Okay, fine. Then I'll just use my continue with this today's class. Yesterday I finished with uh, reading. I, I mentioned that today I'll be discussing about uh, how to read CSV file or uh, the text file containing the numbers. Now how to load into our uh, into numpy array suppose if we have uh, some text file with a tab separated or a, say a comma separated with the new lines how we generally suppose i'll show this uh, this is the text file okay this is all india rainfall from it from 1871 to 1999 this is a toll columns for the toll individual months. And it, it starts from 1871 and it goes up to 1999. Suppose if you are reading this in a normal Python program, how one can write, this is how one can write the program. Yes, you can go through with the number of length of the range. Once you know, like, like here we are just reading the 
f object dot read lines it will read everything into list and that list will be stored into this data string then we are just closing this file object once we get to know how many lines so we'll just the length of data string we are loop throwing with the for loop then we are splitting it with a tab separated because this is a tab separated you can see that and then float we are converting this string into float finally we are storing it so instead of that we can do it in numpy in a single command let me do that So I'm just reading this. That is function called load text in NumPy. This is a text file. So I'm going to you. Uh, first, I'm telling what is the delimiter like either it's comma separated or tab separated so i'm just just giving space then i want to utilize the calls like a number of columns this is the zeroth column this i'm going to skip it because this is string which uh, numpy will not read it, it will read string also but it i have the entire data should be string as I mentioned yesterday, the entire array should be a same same data type. So I'm just skipping the first column, then number first first row zeroth column I'm skipping. Then there is use calls one two. There are thirteen um, thirteen columns and skip rows. So I'm just giving the first row like zero throws because it is starting with some header or you can use one more argument that I forgot I'll show you that if if commented line is there like, like this then that will be skipped let me try I forget the syntax and next okay, I'll just go with the help line Okay, comments start with hash, then delimiter is in its wrong spelling. And you can see that skip rows, use calls, unpack true or false. Let me do, do that. Okay, it says that could not convert string to float. So I'm just using wrong number. String inside.
Waste of time. Okay, I'm just. So I can use companies also by default. It's list index out of range. Okay. Okay. Let me just make it as a comma separated. Yes, because I was given not proper delimiter. So it was having a uh, multiple space. So I just removed with the multiple space into single uh, comma separated. Now let me load the entire row, entire columns. Sorry, tall. Okay, and so I have taken some wrong example. Okay, use columns. Okay. So I just use, uh, read the uh, third row, zero, one, this one. Okay. When I read, this value has been returned. So let me read at least this one. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it became big numbers because when you replaced with the comma, uh, some mess up happened. So however, uh, I'll just skip this demo as of now. You can use this load numpy.load text command. It will load your entire CSV file or whatever the text file into multi-dimensional array. Yeah, then finally, what is CDAT? It's uh, designed for climate science data, as well as other, other data also can be used. First released in 1997. It's based on, oops, Python computer language. And it is having uh, added packages that are useful to the community climate, climate community and other geophysical science. 
and this is the main thing today we'll see that what is cdms climate data management system and it is uh, packed over the numpy also masked array the main thing is it is retaining the meta information also we have visualization its own package called vcs and we can other supporting library like ia graphics xm grace matplotlib btk wise also graphically user interface is there and this is the one at another powerful called a cdml or xml this is if you are using ncl then you will come to another ncml and it is integrated with the las open open and dap esg and the latest one like jupyter also there and this is based on bsd open source license okay then let's go with the cdms so it can read and write it can read cdms sorry net cdf file net cdf means a network climate data file that's a net cdf and hdf file is a hierarchy directory file and grip1 grip2 pp file ff file drs can be read so what is the syntax is just import cdms2 version 2 so cdms2 then similar to our file normal file we are just using the cdms2.open and your our nc file similarly you can write your file name dot nc with write mode and you can write your data or you can read read the append mode or plus let me yeah suppose if we have some nc file some path this is our data path we just imported cdms2 then we are opening that nc file then immediately what can be done so once uh, once we open first we want to know what are all the existing variables available within that nc file so we are just doing f dot list variables it will list out the variables available then once you uh, find some variables immediately we want to see what is it contains or what is the meta information so using square bracket you can get the meta information without loading the entire data suppose your nc file may be having like a 2 gb or 3 gb file you no need to load a entire 3 gb into a ram just to uh, to display the meta information so in that case we can just use this square bracket it will just bring only the meta information or if you want to load everything into our memory then we have to use this square bracket sorry normal uh, parenthesis within that we have multiple arguments that we will see it now so once you loaded you can get the dot info whatever the either partially loaded or fully loaded you can use the dot info and you can close it let me do that so i i have add ast this is the actual add ast i'm going to read it this is a like alias which i made it with the previous versions install in my another server
so what i'm doing once i loaded i'm just reading its list of variables so it contains sst and also it contains bounds latitude longitude and sst so once i uh, i just want to do the info i can do it directly like this so this is the variable so it, it is giving all the meta information id is sst and its shape is 1743 by 180 by 360 so we know that 180 by 360 is latitude longitude whereas 1743 is the time index so that much time time dimension is there and like a file name is there and grid size it's showing this and grid type grid type would be like uh, either it's a gaussian or regular right now it is it doesn't have such a meta information long name you can keep it like sea surface temperature units is celsius standard name sea surface temperature cell method so what they mention like they they made uh, time axis mean and time this is the first axis so it's a monthly data you can see that month since 1980 sorry 1870 and start from zero and they lost at 1742 and similarly latitude it's a degree north total length is 180 starting from 89.5 to minus so north to south and similarly longitude so it's a minus 180 to 180 you can do operation like dot shape but if you are using the square bracket i mean normal parenthesis it will load entire data in, into our memory which we don't want because we will never utilize all the data at a, at a time even if you are going to plot it only one uh, one month or one year annual mean that's what we are going to plot it if it is really needed then you can load it so next i'll show how to read it suppose this is our uh, like a variable here we are just show the example dot sst sst so if you want to just uh, uh in time slice if you want to uh, load it there is a org argument called time then within parenthesis we can keep the start time and end time or if you want if you have some other dimension like latitude longitude or pressure or level that latitude that dimension name also we can specify start start, it, start point and end point also we can keep the multiple point so i'll just load the first one i'm just using slice command so i just loaded the very first uh, month we put dot data it will show the data yes it's a fully like a mask since it's ssd over land it is masked it is having uh, information over only the ocean just uh, with continuation of that i forgot to mention a numpy one more uh, argument is there masked array in numpy there is one more method called masked array is there first let me ex uh, explain that then i'll come back to this you can create a mask array so it's just a mask array not just no numpy array it's just a mask array there is no mask number size is there mask is false because there is no mask if you want to mask something you 
yeah if i'm just masking it less than 5 a less than 5 so it just return the mask with the wherever the condition is true so if mask is true means that place it is that location is masked so you can create numpy.me.mask you can create numpy.me.mask mask underscore less data less than the value so less than this what are the value it, it is being masked the masked location you can see with the if if and if and our dash dash and it's a corresponding mask also you can see the true value here the first of four being masked it's just a mask mask means oh, we know that why we are using mask suppose in land there is no data for the sea surface temperature so it has to be masked so in data science zero is a value zero is not uh, just a it's just not not a unknown value zero is a value in rainfall zero is the value so if suppose in observed data if you don't uh, if you don't have record or observed record we should keep it as a masking not the zero because zero is a value so uh, masking is used in in this kind of terms similarly you can do mask greater so now a greater than 5 being masked now that you can assign into some b value also so this b is containing masked array a is just a original array where mask is false there is no mask but b contains mask wherever this true wherever the true is there those locations are being masked so suppose if you want to fill this b wherever the mask is there if you want to fill with some numbers say minus 100 so wherever this mask those locations being replaced with the minus 100 so this is the continuation of with the numpy and mask dari now let me go with the sst yeah sst dot shape i'm just printing with sst SST is right now you can see with the masking. If you just do mask, you will get the true or false, true and false. If you just want to get the max, so you can see that. I hope you can see that. This the first month the SST is uh, like twenty nine degrees Celsius. You can get the minimum and mean. So likewise, you can do all the uh, data, meta information. You can get it. Suppose if I'm just uh, want to know what is this SST time, you can use this get time function. Is there? It's just bringing the only one month because this SST contain this SST contain only one month data. It shows that only one time dimension is one. But suppose if you're accessing the entire entire sst from the variable then its time axis is you can see that length is 1743 months whereas this this sst which we stored that is having just only one one month let me show you what is this month contains i guess it's yeah this is starting month 1870 similarly if you can get it for here also so these many months months are there it's ending with the 2015 starting from 1850 
as i mentioned earlier we can get the sst just load with sst1 we can get past the time also an example we have seen so i'm just using this as a string so this is just starting my index i'll go with the entire year you can understand this is january and this is december So now it's loaded the twelve months. So it just loaded with the twelve months from uh, eighteen eighteen seventy January to December. Suppose if you want to load with the two thousand fifteen, that also we can do it. Let me load only two months. So it just loaded with the two months, and you can see that its time is 2015 January and February. So likewise, you can uh, split the time axis, and we can we have seen that a diamond's name also. That also I'll show it now. Yes, I'll show that. So what is our SST shape? This SS, SST shape is 180 and 360. Let me. Open now over our Indian region. Like uh, minus ten. Minus ten means that ten south. And then let let me go up to twenty north, where that Arabian Sea crosses. So I'm just uh, slicing to latitude. You can see that now latitude dimension has been reduced to thirty. Let me reduce the longitude also. Say sixty to hundred. Now we can see that it's a first dimension is time, which we reduced to two diamond, uh, two time point. Two thousand fifteen January and February. Then thirty latitude, forty longitude. You can see that now just in four. So it's just a minus nine point five to nineteen point five. That's a minus ten to twenty north. Since already our data is uh, going with the my the point five interval, so it, it has just brought that latitude. Similarly, longitude sixty to hundred. I, I kept so it's just brought sixty point five to ninety nine point five. Suppose if you want to list out. All the latitudes you can do, get latitude. Get latitude. You can use this uh, list. So it's just a listing out all the latitudes. Similarly, you can do the longitude. Similarly, you can slice to the level also. If you have, if if your data contains the level. Or pressure level, you can use the level argument. 
and next uh, we are going to see about the uh, cd time it, it contains this module uh, available in the cd this is very useful in terms of time uh, time object management import import cd time then you can convert or create relative time like cd time dot real uh, relate time like 19 then you can put in an argument days since some date so that will create that many days let me show that cd time then relative time cd time dot say from today let me go with the uh, next 20 days days since 2020 april 7 Sorry, yeah. So it just produced uh, 20 days since uh, 2024 7. So just to bring in, you may, you may be thinking that it's just printing it, but it's a object. You can see that. A CD time uh, related time object. Well, if you want to know what all things can be done using this, you can do add, add to another time, you can compare, you can subtract. So there is a function called to component. So I'm just going to use that. You can convert this into printable com component. So now we just uh, it has gone ahead of 20 days. So I'm just stored this C is a component. It's just not a string. You can further see that what is containing this component time. This also having so many methods. You can convert back to relative or fraction. Let me do it. C dot year. It just to break. Uh, since C is an object, it contains the year method. Here is another C dot month, C dot day. So you can get C dot hour. Hour, you can go up to minute and, and seconds. This C also you can again come uh, convert back or convert to relatives. This component, uh, do you want to, uh, you can go to related to something else. So again, 20 days. Sorry, this this is so it just converted back to again relative time. You can go the negative also, negative number also, it will go back to the previous days. So these are all a uh, limit. Uh, Facilities available in CD time. You can further, you can do that. So if I'm just doing DA or CD time, so it is having months, hours, and no leap calendar seasons. So it, it is having some predefined seasons that I'll, I'll show you. Like all the seasons available. JJA or MAM JJA. The standard four seasons are available and also annual is the predefined. We will see one by one. And moreover, this uh, let me explain about arrays and masked arrays and masked variables. This we understand this since yesterday we are talking about NumPy two dimensional. Yesterday, we have also seen the three dimensional. So this is just for example, two dimensional array. And today I showed the demo for the numpy.ma. It's just having array plus mask. 
once we mask it just return the mask array and in see that one more data type called mv2 so masked a variable version 2 what it contains array and mask information plus domain in the in terms of latitude or longitude information plus further meta information like id and its units and its units that is called a masked variable so that's what we have seen so far like this so this entire numpy or numpy.mga variable has been read through as a mv2 variable with all the meta information id units comments then it's a dimension meta information time and latitude longitude yeah i just uh, so here what the example is just if you have some numpy array you can do the all the operations just a simple numpy array whereas this is numpy.ma masked greater sum a equal to 4 so this also I explain so it is containing this masked this elements of mask and it's a masking true or false has been shown and mv2 this is having all the meta information this is what our interest we should do all the operation of uh, numpy and numpy ma also retaining our meta information as long as possible like whatever operation we are doing regrade or whatever stuff it should retain its meta information so that uh, we can write into any time to the end next of file so summary we can say that uh, take advantage of numpy arrays syntax to make operation with arrays both faster and make more flexible so there are uh, multiple python packages other than say that pi and io and pi PySclinch, PyTables, Scientific Python to handle CDF, HDF, etc. But in a uh, in CDF, I'm more comfortable. For the past 10 years, I'm using it without need of any other package in Python in terms of accessing our climate or weather data set to produce uh, publishable figures also. So I acknowledge Dr. Johnny Lin, who made this presentation. And also I'll go with the, I'll just go through this. Two more slides. I thought. Yes, this I already showed you how to, uh, yeah, one more thing I'll just, I'll just mention is to this. Yeah, you can, uh, select through the time latitude longitude let me go go back to yes this sst dot shape contain to suppose if we have a single dimensional let's say i'm just uh, importing only one dimension one time dimension this one if if you don't want to list out this first dimension or single dimension you can use a squeeze option squeeze i'm just enabling it to one now it will become just it, it just uh, remove the single single dimension dimension also you can change the order while you While loading, you can choose the order which, which you want. Okay, the first time doing time, then y, y dimension, y dimension is latitude, and x dimension is longitude. So it's just uh, bringing this same shape. But if I go with the different, say, first time bringing latitude, then longitude, then time, see that it just what it just reorder the using the reshape command but we are uh, giving the 
options through our lat long index. So you can uh, rotate uh, your, you can rotate your cube once you load it or while loading itself, you can rotate your variable, whatever order you want. Prefer, preferable order to, uh, preferable order is time, then latitude, then longitude. That's a T, Y, X by default. That's the order. If we have level, then level should be a second argument, like time level, then latitude, then longitude. So this is what we have seen so far. And I'll discuss about these bounds in the latitude tomorrow onwards. Also, we, we can do multiple CD util, utilities there where we can do the average or vertical average and region ways we can select predefined region is there or we can create our own region similarly you can do time operational in terms of uh, selecting the seasons or take the average over the seasons also we can do regrading also the uh, multi uh, statistical operations are there like you can do the correlation standard deviation and you can calculate EYF empirical orthogonal function. So many things are there. I'm not showing all the stuff. I'm just uh, giving the glance. Once you are getting interest into the CDEP, then you yourself can learn multiple things. So I'll read the 5.452. Let me go to question session. Please uh, ask your questions here. Yes, and somebody asked the question. So header in four can't read in NumPy. NumPy is just uh, numbers. It doesn't have any meta information. That's why in CDAT, they build or build the meta information over the NumPy, where it's always associated or bringing the meta information. And also I mentioned the homework session. Yesterday, someone asked, give some homework. Also, I sent you the same homework to your email and those who are watching in YouTube, in comment section, also I mentioned the homework. You can go through it. Let me explain the question once again. So write a Python script to display the nth multiplication table up to mth times. So get both n and m numbers from the user. For example, if n is two given by the user and m also given by user as a three, then it should display as follows. Like one cross two is equal to two, two cross two is equal to four, so likewise, up to m times. And once you displayed it, you should write that output into some text file, say n and m. n and m should be replaced with a two by three in this example. So this is just a Python for yourself to learn how to read or how to write into some text file. And problem two is add uh, more mathematical operations like subtraction, addition, division to the problem one. That also you have to get it from the user, what operand they want to, they want to display as a tables. And homework problem three, you have to generate a three by six random integer numbers varying from 10 to 40 using numpy.random function is there and find yourself how to generate. It should the value should be within 10 to 40, the random numbers. Then mask it wherever number is greater than 20 and numbers less than 30 without using loops. And your script should not exit three lines, including import statement. So that's the challenge. Just the three lines. And similarly, uh, four, problem four, fill with the uh, e to the power 
or 10 to the power 20 wherever masked is in this result that also in three lines okay i will share this pdf file and i will keep the keep it here the same location and share it here to also comment in the youtube uh, description let me go to the chat box Yeah, I couldn't use the link to ask question to say what I asked. How can I read a different NC files, especially data from trim? You can you can read it. You can read uh, what are the NC files either in NetCDF 3 or NetCDF 4 or NetCDF 4 classic. All the NC files you can read through in CDAT, just uh, as I showed uh, in the example. So it's already about five. So if, if you have any doubt, please ask it here or mail me or write down in the coaching session. Yes, uh, this question I understand. Suppose if we have multiple NC files, and I think I'm understanding correctly. If we have multiple NC files, tomorrow I'll show a demo how to read all together uh, without merging the merging those NC files. Suppose if we have thousands of NC files, we we have utility called CD scan. Once you scan it, it will produce one XML file. Using that XML file you can read all the thousands of NC files without merging it. So uh, tomorrow I'll show the example for that. Uh, tomorrow uh, I'll show demo for whatever I mentioned, like a CD util and gen util to do average, area average or time average, we can do it. Also, uh, like subsetting the season wise or subsetting the take the area average or your time average that also I'll show demo then regridding re regridding also I'll show the demo so with that tomorrow we can finish it then day after tomorrow I'll show the plotting stuff using CRATS then on next day I'll show the CDO See, using CDO, we can be it can be utilized in Python and Iris. With that, I'll conclude the session. And one more thing, I just want to mention. In yes, you see that. So if you come to GitHub page and see that, you can see that it is uh, community development. You can see that more than uh, thirty contributors are there as of now these are the contributors uh, or the coders who come contributing or developing these CDATs and you can see me also I also did some code changes so if you found any bug you can come to this place and you can fix it by your own and they will accept they are happy to accept our code and our contribution so today i'm ending this and tomorrow again we'll see at 4 pm i'll discuss more about the climate to climate data analysis tool thank you i hope uh, nobody having any further questions